Now in this video, we are going to discuss how to improve a risk register template using some Excel features or tools or functions. Now just to define, a risk register template can be used to identify a priority number for certain identified risks. This priority number is calculated by multiplying two numbers, impact number and probability level number both of which will determine the priority level. Just to define or describe the components, impact level, one meaning low, going to five, which is high. So the higher the number you assign for impact level, the higher the impact is to the organization. On the other hand, probability level, the higher the number you will assign, higher the chances are that that risk will happen. So therefore, in order to identify the priority level of a certain risk, all we have to do is multiply the impact level and the probability level. Now some organizations also add another component of the priority level, the severity level. Again, it depends on you, but the idea is that the higher the number that you will assign, the higher the risk number that we will get. So all we have to do here is simple multiplication in order to get the priority level. Now if you're going to drag it downwards, you will see that yes, we have answers for the first two, but we're also getting zeros for those rows that do not have any entries yet. Now this may look okay for some, but let's improve the way that our template will look like. What we're going to do is we're going to put here nothing if the value of the priority level is still zero. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to improve the formula by using logical statements. We're going to put here if and then we want to check two conditions or two logical tests before we perform this calculation. And that would be done by using the end function. The end function is used to combine logical tests together. So first, we want to check if this cell, C5, is not equal or not empty. As you could see here, we're also introducing the concept of saying not equal so since there's no symbol in uh, our keyboard that is equivalent to the equal sign with a slash to say not equal, Excel uses the less than and the greater than combination of the operators in order to say not equal to. We're also going to do the same for this one. So we're going to say that D5 is less than or greater than nothing. So meaning not equal to. So now what's happening here is that this calculation will only happen if this is true or if this is satisfied and that is if C5 is not empty and if D5 is not empty. Only when both of them are satisfied should the calculation happen. If any one of them is not yet filled out, then maybe we need to put here nothing. Enter, no effect on the first one, but when we drag the formula downwards, you will see that nothing here showed up because the condition that we are requiring that both cells on the left side must not be empty is not satisfied yet. Let's give it a try. If I'm going to put here, let's say priority or impact 5, probability 4, that's the only time that a number for the priority level will be calculated. Otherwise, it will be empty. So that's how we can use logical statements to improve our template. Another improvement that we do is by assigning colors to this priority levels. 
So we could do that using conditional formatting. So maybe it's best to create a legend first on which colors or which numbers we're going to assign colors to. So we have a legend here. And let's say I want to see what are the probable numbers that will show up whenever we multiply numbers between 1 to 5 set. So let's say this one, H5, times the number here. And then we have to, of course, lock or make absolute column H because we do not want any other columns other than H for that cell at least. And then for this one, we want to make sure that we always get row 10. That's why we're going to put a dollar sign beside row number 10. Enter. And just to further explain, just to focus on this one, just in case you're not familiar, putting a dollar sign will freeze or will lock or will make absolute a certain row or column or maybe both. But in our case, at least for H5, we only need column H to be locked. While for I10, we need row 10 to be locked. And now we're ready to drag that formula all the way downwards and then to the right. And you will see all possible combinations of multiplying numbers between 1 to 5. So let's say that you want 25 to be red because it's the highest priority. It's high risk. Maybe we can also assign orange color. I'm just using this for legends by the way. So this ones I'm going to make them orange. So again, it's up to you which one you want to turn into orange or maybe a different color for this. Let me highlight the cells. I'm using control to select several non-adjacent cells. So control, click, control, click, control, click, control, click. Maybe this one is yellow. Maybe the number 6 should also be yellow because if we're declaring 5 as a yellow cell, then maybe 6 should also be part of the group. Meanwhile, number 4321 will make them green or low risk. And now we know what numbers we want to assign to each color. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to use conditional formatting for these cells. And the first rule that we want to put is that if the priority resulted to 4 and below, it will turn green. So let's go to home, highlight the cells first, and then home. Conditional formatting, highlight cells. And then less than, okay, so less than 5, any number less than 5 would turn green. And since we do not have any default that looks like what we want here, we could always go to custom format and choose the color of the fill that we want get uh, this one click OK as you could see it's taking effect on my range click OK and now we have a cell that changes color to green if the result is any number less than 5 alright let's have more so this time for the color yellow, this would be any number less than 10. Now you can apply more than one color rule to 
certain cells. So we're going to create the same cells. Go to Home, Conditional Formatting, and then highlight cells that are less than. And this time, we want cells less than 10. That should include 9 and below to turn yellow. So we're going to customize, select a fill color, click OK, and then click OK as well. Now, as you could see, the cells that I have here turned yellow. That is because of the new rule that we added to the cells. The latest rules will always be the one that will be prioritized by Excel. So the rule that I made, the green one, is now covered by another rule. To change that, we're going to highlight the cells, Home, Conditional Formatting, and we have to manage the rules. Now looking at Manage Rules, to make it easy to read the Rules Manager, you just have to look at the position of the colors. As you could see, the yellow is covering the green rule. So that means that the yellow rule has the priority. So all we have to do is change the priority by clicking on this row or this rule. And then you should see here there's an arrow down that should allow you to swap rules in terms of their priority. So now, what we did is that we put green as the first priority over the yellow one. We're going to click Apply. And as you could see, on the background, the cell turned green. Click OK. Let's try. So let's say Impact 4, Probability 4, that should be, oh, let's say 2. So 4 times 2. So this should be 8. So this should give us a yellow cell. On the other hand, if it's just 4, it turns green. So that's how to manage your rules. So that you can put as many colors as you want. And you identify which should be prioritized or which should take effect first. Let's do it again for the sake of review. So highlight the cells, home, conditional formatting, highlight cells. We want the numbers that are less than 24 probably to turn orange. So conditional formatting, highlight cells, less than. Though 24 is impossible to happen, we're going to use that. And as you could see, the rule is taking over the cells. We will change that later on. Custom format. We want to go for an orange cell. Click OK. And maybe it's time to also create the last rule, which is if the result is 25. So that would be conditional formatting highlights cells equal to 25. And then we're going to custom it so it turns red. Click OK. Click OK. So initially, it doesn't look right. If you remember, we have to manage the rules. Home. Conditional formatting. Manage rules. And we have to bring back the green one because it's the lowest number. The lowest rule, so it has to be the first one that will take effect. Followed by the yellow one. The red one should be the last rule to happen. Click apply. Okay, so again, all you have to do is manage your rules such that which one should go first. And then going downwards, click OK. And now, if we have two fives for our impact and probability, it turns red. If, if it's just four for one of them, it turns orange. If it is just one, 
so it will go to the next level while any number that results to 4 will turn green so now our priority levels are easier to understand it's up to you if you want to keep this table over here or you could hide it for future reference and now we have a color-coded risk register template now we're not yet done because what if the user entered a number that is beyond the leveling remember we're only supposed to put 1 to 5 what if the user placed here 6 and that will compromise your report because what will happen is you will not have a for any number that is higher than 25 though you could always change the rule of the cells by going to manage rules home conditional formatting manage the rules such that the last one will not be limited to just equal to 25 I could edit it such that it's any number greater than 25 that's fine but we do not want to go overboard and allow our users to put any number in these cells so we want to limit that these cells will only accept 1 to 5 and that is the job of data validation so we're going to highlight the cells that we want to create a rule on and then we have to go to data tab and then under data tab kindly look for data validation data validation controls or limits what is allowed to be entered among cells so I'm going to click this one and as the term implies data validation it validates entries so we're going to go for allow and then allow whole number and as you could see whenever you change it from the default settings allow any value if you're going to choose a certain data type like whole number it will update the dialog box to show minimum and maximum so we want to say minimum of one and maximum of five now we also want an error alert such that the user will be aware whenever he or she enters a number that is lower or higher than our set range so under the error alert tab you could say here something like please enter numbers from 1 to 5 only click OK now that we're done and next time of course this cell already has the number 6 so data validation cannot change it anymore but if we're going to put numbers that are beyond our numbers you will now get the error message that we wrote in data validation so the user cannot force it to happen you're only allowed numbers that are between 1 to 5 or from 1 to 5 only so 0 as well will produce an error okay again that was highlight data data validation and then you have to change the settings of these cells into whole number between 1 to 5 and it may be helpful to tell the user what is wrong by creating an error alert instead of just showing a generic Excel error message and that's it we now have our risk register template